Yo, there are. You're good. How you doing, sir? How we been? Doing good. How we doing? I'm good. How you doing? Got a packed room. It seems like. Uh, I wish. I mean, <laughs> really, really good players, but just as far as numbers, you know, we're still still more on the thin side compared to other teams. Well, you got plenty of guys in here to represent uh, your group right now. Which oh, means... yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as that goes, like the <laughs> the, core, the the quality is really good. Yeah, yeah. Quality. To me, that means there's a lot of guys that are battling for those uh, the starting positions. So. Yeah, it's, all, it's always going to be like that. The whole season is going to be like that. <laughs> I know that's always kind of your mentality. You know, that you got to compete. Uh, yeah. What are you looking for in those two cornerback spots? You know, both of them seem to be open. So, what are you looking for to for someone to? take at least that, that first step being the, the guy for week one? Uh, I guess, you know, somebody's going to be really consistent because, like you said, we have some, you know, some good depth there. Uh, so we're really going to be who can do the, the job on a daily day basis. Uh, so, you know, just basically being really consistent because some of these guys will have flashes, you know, where all of a sudden they'll dominate a period or they'll dominate a day, but we're looking for the guy that can do it on a consistent basis. How much is Ed Christian uh, Roland Wallace back in the mix, you know, since he wasn't able to do anything during the spring? How does that change the dynamic, I guess, for your, for your room? Uh, I, I wouldn't say it changes that dynamic. I mean, you know, he's played for a lot of football here, but the biggest thing is, you know, as a whole, he just, just like all these guys that play football, they provide leadership, and it's just a, another guy that can out and get the job done. Who is maybe one of the biggest strides this offseason? Uh, you know, you can't really say just one guy in particular because they all have. I mean, you take a guy like Jacoby Covington, he's done all the right things and, you know, uh, he's gotten back healthy from injury. The same thing with Ciro, he's gotten back healthy. Uh, Damani, he's finally gotten healthy. Uh, Sierra made a ton of plays. So, I mean, you go down the list. Profit Brown's made a ton of plays. You go down the list. All those guys have showed drastic improvements. And I mean, thanks to Coach Wiley and the strength staff and then them themselves just getting in there and watching film. How do you keep those guys healthy? Uh, the biggest thing, I guess, after, you know, every practice getting in the cold tubs and just making sure they stay hydrated, especially right now, you know, with the heat wave and everything else going on, you got to stay hydrated. But at the same time, one of the things is when you have quality guys like that, they all can take uh, reps with the ones, the twos, the threes. So just all those guys getting there getting reps allows them to stay healthy. You know, one guy all of a sudden being out, it, it can hurt us a lot because now somebody else has to pick up all those reps. With uh, with the competition, what's kind of your message to the guys going into fall camp uh, of what you see? Is it just consistency, or uh, are you speaking to each other individually about certain things that you want to, want to see from them during fall camp? Uh, a little bit of both, but the biggest thing to me is being consistent. Like, I have no doubt in my mind all these guys play football at a high level, but it's going to be the person that can do it even when their body is not 100% or even when they're not feeling you know, like that particular moment, you know, given that they're all, they still do. So I guess that's the biggest thing for me is right now, who can, you know, go out there and compete on a day-to-day -day basis. Where have you seen Damani grow all the Uh Just like all these guys, he's all grown. I mean, they all got their bodies right. They're all, you know, speed-wise with Coach Wiley and, you know, the strength and everything else. So he's someone that I could definitely see that has grown mentally, just like the majority of the group. And then Toby, you know, he's one of the unique guys with the – pretty impressive size. How is that the uh, You know, a lot, actually, because he has a safety build. So anytime you got a guy that has a safety build, and just like, you know, with us as a whole, we want to be a bigger, more opposing physical group, and he just provides that. Where does play out? Uh, you know, right now, he's, he's kind of more with the safeties. Is there a plan to take one there, or...? Uh, right now, we're going to kind of keep it with safety, nickel. You know, just around, just kind of all these guys, they all, you know, provide quality depth, and they all play multiple positions. So it's, it's all about us getting the best five DBs on the field at a time. Well, in my office, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> I got the AC on. <laughs> Yeah. Here. I was happy to say it's in here. I'm going to hop
I'm doing good. How you doing? Yeah. So, Christian Rollins, when he comes over, he didn't get to go, you know, fully yeah. in the spring. What, what have you been able to see of him since he's been at, at USA? Uh, just the maturity aspect. I mean, just because you can't go physically doesn't mean that you can't go mentally. So, uh, even though he wasn't able to be out there, he definitely understands and knows our defense and provides leadership. And so, I, I think he won't have any kind of setback or hiccup. How much, how valuable is it to, to a, a room, especially with some young guys, to bring in a guy that's taken that many snaps in this conference? I think last year it was more valuable. You know, right now going forward, I think all those, all these guys, you know, have got a chance to play football. They've all went through spring. They all understand, you know, what we want to see out of them. So I, I think it's a little different now. Where has Damani's biggest jump come from over the last six months since the first spring? Uh, just maturity as a whole. I mean, you know, you, you go and you know, just battling through injuries and everything goes just. Everybody, once again, they see the physical aspects, but it's, it's more of the mentality and the, the mental aspect that you got to get over the hump that, you know, I am 100%, that I can go, that I can push off, that I can jump. So I just those things as a whole. And then just him as a whole learning the game of football. I, I think, you know, just with COVID and different things like that, it's put all these guys that was a step behind. And, you know, then you also get injured. So I think right now he's fully caught up and he's, you know, ready to show, you know, the world what he can do. What does that battle look like in terms of guys you have available and the competition for starting spots? Uh, just guys being consistent. I guess, you know, guys being consistent, I think it's going to help us a lot. Uh, they've shown that just by, you know, just you can see the consistency aspect starting when guys come in here on the day-to-day -day aspect, just how they take notes, how they prepare, uh, how they attack the weight room. And you see that from this group as a whole. You know, guys have battled through nicks, bruises, and everything else because they understand the importance of it all. Jacoby Covington's guy's name gets brought up a lot when you talk about kind of off-season work and, and 
progression that he's seen? What jumps out to you about him and, and what he's done since he's got here? Uh, I think he's, you know, he's caught up of how to learn corner. And then also, once again, a guy who understands what we understand here, you know, Trojan standard and everything else. But, uh, you know, he, he didn't get a chance to play corner at previous places. He was always like a safety or a nickel. So now he's you know, fully caught up to where he understands what he needs to do so the physical attributes can take over. Makai was a guy you could just put out there and, and kind of leave him and, and he played the way he played. What did he do for you guys last year and, and, and knowing that, that he could be that guy? Uh, well, last year we did need, you know, a guy that could be mature about that, you know, everything. And, and he was that, you know, he was a rock when it comes to maturity. Uh, now, uh, but it, all these guys have matured over the course of the year. They all have played a lot. Uh, they all have went through spring. And you can just see it in mentality. Even though, you know, you look on the, you know, the, per year, it looks like a younger group. As a maturity standpoint, these guys are all pretty old. What's the, the next step for that group? Looking back at, at last year, to where the you want to see improvement in, in these areas? Uh, you know, no mental mistakes, but at the same time, we need the double production. So everything we did last year, we need to double the amount of production uh, without the mistakes. So, you know, we need to be able to, we needs be, do whatever we need to do out there that Coach Grinch calls and needs upon us. But uh, we definitely need to double production. Last guy, kind of, in, I think in that talk group that, that we talked about, Sia Wright, what, what have you seen kind of this offseason? He's another guy that's, that his name gets brought up a lot. We yeah. talked about just being competitive about everything he does not just you know just football at times but everything he does he's competing whether it's you know out here running with coach wiley or lifting uh he's a guy that always wants to make sure he's at the top of the charts when it comes to that so i mean it carries over to football when you talk about improving production what what drives that what kind of stuff can you can you really focus on and have them work on to uh, basically just being consistent. Like I say, it's even guys that's not here right now uh, that are making a ton of plays out there for us. So, you know, just the more guy plays that guys can make, it brings everybody up because it, it can never be a letdown. It can never be a playoff because someone else can take your job. A true freshman who came in in the spring, that, that again, we didn't get to see. Malachi has such a, an interesting body shape, right, yeah. <laughs> for corner. What do you see in him, you know, really early on? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a guy that once he puts his hands on you just because he does provide the length that, you know, receivers will always want to run around. So, you know, once he learns how to play the angle game and truly understand our defense, he's a guy that, once again, that length is going to be an issue or a problem for anyone. I should ask you a question. You can always ask I should ask you a question. I can turn the recorder back on. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I should. Try and let me see. Let me see. What kind of question I got? First off, does your mom and dad, did they know when you was getting that tattoo? Did they know when you was getting it? They, they both approved of it. How do you feel about it? The drawing did not look like that when you drew it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I approve of it, so we all right. Now don't come out there with them ugly long sleeves on game day. So, we all right. You're hiding your muscles. Dante, what was the uh, camaraderie of this group? You know, how, how tight knit is this, this group of quarterbacks that you got? I think really. Really, really close. Really, really tight. Uh, you know, it's, it started happening last year, and you can see it's a, a big carryover. Just, you know, that the standard that they uphold of each other, uh, the way we break, but at the same time, off the field, how they all hang out with each other. I think that is is a key, right? You can only do so much football-wise, and they're only doing football stuff, and they all go their separate ways. It, we're not really that close. But you can see all these guys, like, off the field on the weekend, and just we know when they have their own free time, they're all around each other. They take each other to each other's homes, the guys that are from out here. So you can see the growth in that. How much does that help the cornerback? The cornerback is such a kind of an island position, whereas, you know, offensive line, defensive line, you're relying on the guy beside you a little bit more. How much does that help in that position uh, at cornerback to be close with the other guys in your group? 
I think it helps a lot. I mean, everybody, you know, wants to see your brother or your best friend. They all want to see him succeed, but that's at the same time, that's the people you want to compete the hardest against. And when you're able to do that, I mean, you bring the best out in each other. So you can see that starting to happen here where, you know, it's, it's a standard. They all want to uphold the standard and they don't want to let each other down. How, have you, how do you think the competition will play out? Just as far as, you know, you got four guys fighting for two spots, um, you know, maybe more. Um, how do you foresee it kind of playing out? And with that camaraderie that they do have, you know, is it, do you start elbowing the other person out of the way type of thing? Or? Uh, I think it's a little more than four, but these guys are great. I mean, they've, they've been good about that. At the same time, like I say, our numbers are maybe less than, than other places. So uh, they all want to see each other succeed. They know if they all produce and practice, they all will get opportunity in the game. Uh, so that's the biggest thing. I don't think nobody understands. Like, it just wants to see negative from anybody or just tries to push someone out the way. I think they all know that their time will all come. With the group that you have, um, you talked about consistency being something you want. It, individually, is there something you're looking for? Uh, you know, maybe those primary guys. Well, can you go through each one, like what you want to see them take a step from where they were last year? Uh, my, my biggest thing, just not even like individually, just as a whole, right? Um, you know, players will all take the mentality of their coaches, and it's a top-down operation. So you got to make sure, you know, with me myself, we follow even Coach Riley's lead. So um, I just want to make sure that the players go out there and compete at everything they do. I don't care what it is that we got going on. Like being in the middle of the pack is, is, is just not acceptable. So I want to make sure that everything we do, that we are first, right? They all say that they want to be held to the standard that, you know, like of this team. So, I mean, when they all say it, they self and they all showing it in their actions, then we're going to be just fine. For you, um, year two with Lincoln Riley and the rest of the staff, obviously you haven't been, been the holdover guy. Uh, what's the, the biggest difference this year versus last year for you? Uh, even me myself, I'm a lot more comfortable. Uh, I think, you know, when you, it, it's one thing to just be the holdover. It's another thing when, you know, I've never worked with none of these guys previously. So at, at the same time, I was trying to make sure that, uh, you know, I understand what they want out of me, uh, what I can expect out of them. Um, and, you know, you go, you're going to really learn that through trials and tribulations. You can say so much, but actions show everything. And, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be in the situation I'm in, you know, to be around really, really great people. It's one thing to be around good football coaches. I mean, it's a ton of good football coaches out there, but it's really hard to find really good people. So when you're around really good people at the same time, just like I say, the players don't want to let each other down. It makes it to where we don't want to let each other down as coaches. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really, really fortunate enough to be in this situation. Like I say, like, I can find a ton of good football coaches, but I can't really find a ton of good people. So it's good when, you know, you got that environment. You guys, I mean, all off season, all in the end of last season, everyone was talking about the defense being bad. Uh, is that a chip on your guys' shoulder that you take with you through the off season and lead for, or you just try to block out everything else? Uh, I'm not really too worried about the past because in this profession, in athletics in general, every day is a job interview. Everything you do every day is a job interview. And every day you got to decide that you get that job or that you're not. So there's no need for me to worry about yesterday or last year. I need to be focused on today and tomorrow. With, with that, um, do you see with the offense you guys have coming back, Heisman Trophy winner, dynamic everywhere, um, what do you see as your guys' responsibility on the defensive side? Uh, to make sure that we give the ball back to the offense or either <laughs> score ourselves. I mean, that's the biggest thing is to make sure every time we take the field, I mean, Coach Grinch says it best that, you know, we take the field pretty much to get the ball back to the offense and score ourselves. So, I mean, that's, you know, what we're looking for. Nobody takes the field on defense and wants to take the field and give up anything. So, you know, our whole thing is to take the field every day and be competitive at everything we do. What's the biggest thing your group has to be better at than it was last year? Uh, as a whole, I, I think, you know, like I say, last year we was a little younger. So it was a little bit more mental mistakes. Uh, this year, I, I don't foresee any. You know, and that's really where I, where I want to see them grow. And just the, the mentality and the maturity is drastic. So, you know, just make sure we continue with that because it's not going to always be perfect. You know, not every day is perfect. And some days you're going to have Debbie down of days or things hurt. But just to make sure that you understand how to push through those things is, is huge. Coach, talking to Coach Grinch, Grinch you mentioned uh, Christian Roland Wallace trying him in some different positions. Where do you see his best role? Corner, nickel, how, how do you see him fitting in? Uh, the best thing here is that, you know, all these guys learn how to play corner, safety, and nickel. 
So I, I think it's make sure we always get the best five DBs on the field at a time. You know, if you get pigeonholed into kind of one spot, you know, it's, it's kind of a little hard for you to make it, especially if, you know, everybody has aspirations after college to play professionally. I mean, you got to go to where it's needed to try to kind of make that team. So it's, it's a plus here that with me and Coach Grinch, you learn how to do everything. With uh, so many great corners here, Damani, Jacoby, Christian fighting, they're only going to play corner, fighting for those two corner spots. What's that like for you as a coach? you got a really deep room, but at some point you got to disappoint someone because someone's going to win a spot. What's that like for you? I mean, it's even another guy. You know, you got Prophet yeah. Brown, you got Fabian. So you got multiple guys. But my biggest thing is, like I said, we're trying to put the best five on the field at a time. And if those guys are all of a sudden producing in practice, if it's four or five of them producing in practice, it's going to be four or five of them playing the game. If it's only two or three producing practice, it's only going to be two or three playing the game. And that's my job to make sure that I get all of them produced and all of them playing the game. So, I mean, that's one of the advantages that you say offense has. You know, when a receiver runs a fade, he, go ahead and, he goes ahead and jogs off the field. Another receiver comes in. And usually every corner has to jog back and cover the next guy and the next guy. So if you all of a sudden provide the kind of depth, when they go ahead and sub, we can sub too. You've been in a really unique position the last couple of years as the interim coach and then the holdover like shotgun mission. What are some of the most important things you've learned as a coach these last two years? Uh, that definitely, uh, you got to learn how to follow before you can lead. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest things when you, you know, you're fortunate enough to be around a really, really great head coach that, uh, you know, you pick up every little thing that he says and, you know, some of his knowledge and follow his lead you know uh, my biggest thing is making sure that the role that I'm given that I star in that particular role so uh, just making sure I focus on the day-to-day -day aspects of what I can do to make my particular group better and then just going back to the depth thing so so many of these talented corners ideally they are impressing you in practice so they are getting on the field how nice is that as a coach is it a luxury to have all these great players and ideally they get on the field and you're not just relying on one or two guys what's that uh, you know, it makes it fun to come to work every day. Like, that's the biggest thing for me right now is like, I tell it to them all the time, you know, sometimes I think they think I'm joking, but I'm really fortunate enough to be coaching these particular group of guys. At the same time, I'm happy. You know, you see so many coaches that always look angry and upset. Like, I'm happy to come to work every day. and I'm happy to, you know, have the opportunity that I have to coach really, really good football players. And it's my job to make it even better than what they are. So I'm fortunate. Is that question available? available? To properly evaluate how good you guys are at playing against Caleb and Lincoln every day in practice. Uh, I think it's a key. I mean, a really, really good wide receivers, a great quarterback, uh, amazing head coach. So when you have three really good things on, on offense, you know, it gives us a standard to uphold every day. And for us to go out there and realize that we're going against them, we're going against the best. Uh, so to see that every day, I think we're fortunate. Does that prepare you better? In, in what ways does it kind of prepare you better to play uh, Michael Penix at Washington or Bo Nix at Oregon? Uh, I mean, to be honest, I'm not worried about none of those things right now. I'm worried about right now. Tomorrow's practice at 6 a.m., making sure that we can stop Brendan Rice and Mario Williams and, you know, Taj Washington and Caleb Williams. So, I mean, that's what I'm focused on, just tomorrow practice. Jacoby Covington is, is somebody that you have high expectations for yeah. this season. What, what are, what's behind that, the high expectations? Uh, I mean, pretty much all these guys. You see the size, you see the speed, you see the numbers they put up in the weight room. You see how all of them have grown mentally. That is so important to me, like the maturity aspect of all these you know, particular guys. You see where they have, have went. Uh, you see how the importance has changed, right? The sense of urgency is really, really high here and with them. So I, I think that's really important for me to see those particular things, and you see it amongst the group as a whole. And if uh, you know if we only had really one guy that was pretty good and the rest were kind of average, uh, then one guy feels like he could take plays and downs off. Uh, but right now, with so many you know quality kind of guys that we have in position, it allows guys to know that they can't take a play off, that every play means so much because you can go really fast from being the starter to the backup. And that's really, really important because competition brings out the best in all of us. How, how much went into him learning to actually play the position that he will be this year? A lot, a lot. I mean, I, I think it's, it's one thing to kind of know and understand that, you know, the, the coverage and the concepts. It's another thing when you, your body has to move a particular way that it's not used to moving. Uh, especially, you know, when you play a position like safety, sometimes everything happens in front of you. When you play corner, sometimes things are happening right next to you. So it's a little bit different. Things are going you really, really fast. And I, I think he's grasped the speed in which he needs to play it. Thank you. No problem.
Last year there was, you know, you guys kind of split duties uh, with cornerbacks and uh, in safeties with you and Grinch. Is that changing at all with the living des designation of uh, defensive backs or things like that? Or? Uh, I mean, we, we work together. So we kind of all have work together. Sometimes you all see what's going on, like maybe a 10 minute portion of practice. Yeah, yeah. But it's over the course of a whole day, meetings, everything else. We work together. We we always have, and we always will. You've okay. seen Kalen uh, kind of you know, grow uh, here at USC. Yeah. Uh, what are some factors that you feel like he can uh, improve on, and some factors where like he's excelled uh, your expectations? Uh, I, you know, I, just him as a whole. I mean, he's just getting older and older. So it's not nothing really a him. It's just as you get an older player, you become more mature. So your leadership abilities start taking over. And I think he's getting to that point uh, to where instead of him pretty much watching others, it's a chance for you know others to kind of watch him a little bit. Uh, so that has definitely helped. But at the same time, you see him. I mean, he showed up here at 150 pounds, and now he's a 197 pounds. So his body and his strength has definitely changed a lot. Dante, I know uh, Alex is talking about like going back to practice film from last year, like kind of granularly yeah. really looking at where he can change things. How have you seen maybe that sort of manifest as you guys are improving the defense sort of over the off season? Uh, a lot. I mean, you know, we all need to, you always got to give self-evaluation of who you are on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think, you know, even like right now, when I go out and work out with the guys one-on-one -on, -one on the field or whatever the case, I'm able to evolve and, know what guys did maybe last year, but at the same time, know how much of a difference it is right now. And, you know, try to make sure we cater things to, you know, what our players can do. It's hard when all of a sudden you really don't know what they could do and you're kind of in the fire. But right now, I think we're, we're making sure that we, we put them in the best light to where they can succeed. Thank you, Dante. Yeah. Thank you. How's your stomach? A lot better. <laughs>